it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. As Europe finds itself plagued by a resurgence of right-wing nationalism and a corresponding rise in hostile anti-immigrant sentiment, over on this side of the pond, a similar dynamic is playing out in the United States, albeit one with distinctly American characteristics. A group of Texans are pushing for a Texas exit, or Texit. 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 But while the odds of a so-called Texit are slim to a motherfucking nil, there's no getting around the fact that the political atmosphere in the United States is toxic as fuck, and shit only seems to be getting worse. Decades of neoliberal capitalist restructuring has produced vast economic deserts in so-called middle America, as jobs have been shipped off to hyper-exploited labor markets in the global south, public schools have been decimated by years of chronic underfunding, and federal and state prisons are overflowing. Mass shootings have become an almost daily fucking phenomenon, and each fresh tragedy is immediately and reflexively seized upon as a chance to blame politically convenient scapegoats. A Muslim scholar says killing homosexuals is the compassionate thing to do. This is part of their religious doctrine, their ideology. Within this bleak fucking context, a growing army of pissed off Americans have retreated into fantasies based on heavily romanticized and whitewashed images of a fictional past and vast fucking conspiracies promoted by red-faced asshats like Alex Jones. You're declaring war on this country with a bunch of jihadis you brought in! You did it, you son of a bitch! The Trump campaign has been a clarion call for millions of Americans, disillusioned by the repeated betrayals of Washington insiders like Hillary Clinton. When their holdings are invested in the Cayman Islands and her husband is middleman to some of the world's biggest deals, as they feather their nest at the expense of America, it is time to take the country back. And as his fascist calls for border walls and mass deportations of Muslims have sparked militant resistance from peeps in cities across the country, many Trump supporters have announced plans to descend on Cleveland for the RNC on July 18th in what's expected to be an epic showdown between two bitterly opposed camps. Fittingly, this showdown will be taking place in an open carry state, in the very city where 12-year-old Tamir Rice was gunned down by racist fucking pigs in 2014. And outside the well-managed spectacle of the 2016 electoral farce, neo-Nazi and white supremacist groups like the KKK have also been taking advantage of the current levels of racist, hyper-nationalist rhetoric thrust into the mainstream by Trump's campaign. In the latest example, on June 26, members of the Traditionalist Workers Party attempted to hold a rally at the California State Legislature in Sacramento. They were confronted by a group of roughly 400 Antifa, who proceeded to shut them the fuck down and give the Nazi scum a serious fucking thrashing. During the resulting scuffle, numerous people were stabbed, including at least four anti-fascist comrades, with three more comrades hospitalized due to blunt force trauma. And that's why we need to take them on directly. Take them on head on, confront them, but with as many people as possible prepared to shut them down. And that is what this demonstration did today. Sacramento was the latest front in an increasingly violent battle between fascist and anti-fascist militants. The way things are headed, it's not going to be the last. 